stop. For my life. So for those of you that have smartphones, you can make best use of those applications towards learning on demand, inshallah. We had them rolled out for the sake of benefiting, benefiting humanity, for the sake of rolling out towards the implementation and learning of Quran worldwide. So Alhamdulillah, so for those of you who have smartphones, please take advantage of that. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, what does Allah speak about travel? Allah tells us in the Quran, Al-Ladina Amanu Mahajan Wa Jahad, those who truly believe and they migrate and they make effort. He's a big enough in the path of Allah. strengthen their position in front of games and they are those that are successful and will not run out and have a sort of way and have a single part and have a full of the people of one and the other one and that they stand up as a super visit there and that they have a good way 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 travel, yes, there is so many kinds of travel when you have a good way, you have a good way when you have a good way, you have a good way even every night you know it has another recommend in the big time there are so many kinds of travels it's traveling, going to the national parks going to the game parks, going to the zoos going to the you know, riverside uh, mountains um, what's it called, you go to uh, resorts but <laughs> this is this should be the main focus the professor of Allah Salaam says in the Siyah Atiya Kurmatiya Jihad Fisabi surely the trouble of my woman is straight in the path of Allah so let's say if you make the intention to travel about you want to travel let's say you're going to the national park please travel with the intention of spreading the deal of Allah there so that people can see you and think you can be a role model you can be a positive influence towards them this was the mentality of the Sahabas wherever they would go they would be displaying their religion of Islam and people would actually find themselves liking them falling in love with, them, with their parents and impressing Islam even without them uttering a single word. What does that mean? It means they were, they were like a magnetic force. The way they dressed, the way they appeared, the way they looked like was so, so attractive towards the people that were so around you. They would ask us and they would say, even on what they were looking at them, maybe because that intention. Now for me, many years ago, Staying in China, uh, there was a mosque. There's a place called Guantanamo. Guantanamo. Guantanamo is just like the Guangzhou. Also, for those who have been in China, and I think you must have seen that that, that place. And Guantanamo Mosque is the first mosque in China, very old mosque, over like a thousand four hundred years. Now, in that place called Guantanamo, you're gonna find you're gonna come across Chinese Arabs. I've a, a Chinese guy from Guantanamo. Many of them, many of them are there, even they have some here. Some of them can speak some Arabic, and many of them are Muslims. I put you in Guantan Law, it's a in China, Wang Zhou, it's a in Wang, the China, and the Bali Kakabara, the Bali Kakabara, the Chinese Kakabara, meaning there was an intermarriage between Arabs and the local Chinese during the time when the Arabs migrated there. Now you went to what's amazing is that those Arabs that came to China, they passed, they, they, because of that masjid, there is a long minaret. Guantanamo, actually, that masjid is called Guantanamo, meaning that that long minaret, 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 it has a long minaret. So, that long minaret is where these Chinese were standing to view the Sahabas that had come to spread Islam in China. This is where they would see them and they would go and welcome them, they would go and receive them. By but it's, what's, what's amazing is that these Sahabas, all these Arabs that had come during that time, they had come for business, but they came for business but with the intention of spreading Islam and introducing Islam in China. That is how China, uh, you know, that is how Islam was introduced in China. So you, you, you can only discover this if you get a chance. Guantanamo, you know, 
then we realize how Islam stands about in China. That Sahabas will come and spot them from a long way now. We have a very long way now. Spring pass, we have a very long way now. We have a very long way now. Someone stands up there and sees people coming. And these people who are coming, he goes and receives them. And these people who are receiving them, they introduce the religion to them. The one is the one who 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 is so that is what they call trouble. A, a true believer, you have to travel with the intention of spreading Allah's religion. Then you're going to be successful. That is why you're successful. That's what happened. Whenever the events when you see the history of Uganda, how is not going to in Uganda? We have here the Romanians, and we've been in Iraq, but that's not been in Iraq. These people came, mashallah, with amazing morality, good morals. They came once they arrived in Uganda. They, they got in touch with the kingdom of Uganda. And they gave some prizes, like tunics. It was so nice that the surround comes with them. And so many, and, and as well, they used to also show, you know, they showed people business. These women, they showed business a lot. And that is how we even well, we learn business here in Uganda. They came with a lot of ideas, like, you know, many ideas in terms of business regarding business to the extent that on Fridays, Juma, Juma would be done, conducted, and people would still go out and perform, and, you know, go out and engage themselves in business activities. If you realize those Mulera councils, they are all mine. But at the end of the day, they were also very, very inspirational and very active towards introducing Islam in Uganda. And that is how Islam was introduced in Uganda. You know, so that's why you don't think that to spread your religion, to spread Islam, it requires a lot of, you just have to be there, and you, you're just going to be like, no man, and you just still have things to do, and that's what you're going to have to be doing. No, you can still engage in whatever you want. You can be a doctor, mashallah, you're going to treat people in hospital, but you have that mentality of, 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 of actually spreading Islam. You may perform good towards someone, and because of your dress code, or because of your conduct, this is what Allah wants, and that is our responsibility. Not, not actually being like, no, 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 to do this, I just have to be like, you know, but I guess that you know, you know, all times in Guinea, we can still have this religion uh, conducted, even with our usual daily activities. But it's just a matter of what they call thick worry and concern over others. But this is how even the religion ended up coming here in Uganda. Those people, they were, had the motive of business, but they also had, had the main, main motive of spreading religion and introducing it in Uganda. And many other countries, that is how the people were spread. So you see that these Arabs have not granted that, that have that capacity to share, to, to spread this religion worldwide, but to be through business motives and through uh, morality and, and, uh, and, and, and appearance. And their appearance as well. Surely the traveling of my woman is spreading the path of Allah. So you've been making attention to go to the zoo. It's not haram to go to the zoo, not at all. It is not haram to go to the game parks. But go with that intention. To, to, be a, to be an inspiration, to be, a, to be a, a someone that can display the religion of Allah and people can end up actually embracing it and admiring it and they may not accept it there and then but at least they can have they can have at least an admiration towards the religion of Allah I remember when we were in Malaysia many years ago in Malaysia Malaysia is a Muslim country a very very uh, strong Muslim country, Malaysia, Syria, Syria, 
ate nsi yonna na Malaysia na Indonesia zizi singa supply nga what they what we call uh, 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 there is what we call oil there is this oil this is of course the name of it so Malaysia and Indonesia are actually more more famous for supplying that for Huawei but let me go back to the point it is one of the countries that are practicing Islamic banking in the world Mukunda says just as Okina is practicing Islamic banking in the Korea River in their interest. So many of their banks mostly are, they have that Islamic finance department of avoiding the so called conventional loans. Especially the banks that we saw in the Bakuwa loan is in Islamic Bank. Bakuwa Chibai Kamuraba Hamadaba. Islamic loan or Islamic finance. So they are very famous for that. But now, Malaysia is very, very famous, a very beautiful country. But let me tell you the secret. Maybe perhaps why I was getting them rich where they are. Because it was a poor country. Now Malaysia in the 70s, they are equally in Uganda. If not, if I'm not mistaken, the 70s or 60s. But what made them progress about these people? They sat down and they thought, like, you know what, we are Malaysia. What can we do? What impact can we make our way to become a, a, a somebody, to become a country, a country that is worth visiting? These guys actually, they, you know, they came up with this idea. Let us. Let us, let us actually modify tourism, our tourism industry, and let us make build beautiful mosques. mosques. So Malaysia, they built very nice mosques. It's one of the countries, Lebanon, Saudi, and the so-called so Middle East, I know you're going to find beautiful mosques there, but Malaysia is a one-stop for beautiful mosques. But we are going to grab mosques in the world, you ask how much they to Malaysia. They have very nice mosques, and they basically the, the mosques have Wi-Fi in them, internet access. There's a mosque called Mosque Steel. It is found in Putrajaya. It's actually the mosque for uh, because Putrajaya is the political. Uh, it is where the government offices are situated in Malaysia. So that mosque is for them basically. It's a very big mosque, not the main mosque of Malaysia, but it's one of the big mosques. So this mosque was built with steel, steel, but also steel. No, not even on bricks. Still, not only that, there are also many other massages that have been built with amazing craft, amazing technology and equipment as well. Now, as a result of them beautifying their massages, people, Europeans, Africans, Americans, uh, Arabs, they ended up having to come to Malaysia for tourism, but they're coming towards Moses. And what becomes very interesting is that even Europeans say that there was a time we were with this group called Massive Mission. I was with them in 20, I think it was 2013. So Massive Mission is an organization, an NGO uh, started by uh, started by by a, uh, a gentleman originally from Australia, known as Taufik Chaudhry, Doctor Taufik Chaudhry. So we teamed up with them and we did what they call street Dawa went to the streets of Malaysia and we went to a small such a masjid called Masjid Jame, Masjid Jame. So this Masjid Jame is one of the ancestral masjids of Malaysia, the origin of the, you know, the, the, the founding, the, the, the first masjid built in Malaysia, very old masjid. As we were standing there, not even saying anything, a certain man, he's from Britain, a British white man, he was currently there, at that time he was staying in Singapore, but he, he approached him. He was touring that masjid. So when we approached him, we were like, how do you feel? We just asked him, how do you feel? We didn't speak anything about him in Islam. So we asked him, how do you feel? He was like, I feel so peaceful inside. To the extent that I've never felt this peaceful throughout my entire life. And he's like, he's been staying in Singapore for so many years. He's working in Singapore, but he's a British citizen, a white man, British citizen. And he was like, I've never felt this beautiful, this inner peace. He became a very famous country, a very, very developed country. They introduced Islam, they decided to, to actually you know, use tourism to, to introduce Islam to the, to the, to the outside world. That was, uh, so 
ਇਸ ਦਿਨ ਮਲੇਸ਼ੀਆ ਦਾ ਫਲਾਗ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਮਨ ਮਾ ਬਾਗ ਸੇ ਮਲੇਸ਼ੀਆ ਗਾਇਸ ਥੋੜੀ ਸੇ ਮਾ ਤੋ ਸੇ ਮਲੇ ਬਾ ਇਹ ਕੋ ਨੋਗਨ ਸੇ ਗਾ ਮੇ ਸੇ ਗਾ ਨਾ ਮੇ ਸੇ ਸੇ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਕੋ ਬੋਲ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਦਿਸ ਵਾਈ ਪੀ ਮੋਰ ਦੇ ਕਾ ਮੀ ਦੋਸ ਕੰਟਰੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਕਾ ਕੋ ਥੋੜੀ ਸੇ ਇਟਸ ਵਾਟ ਆਰ ਟ੍ਰਾਕਸ ਦੇ ਬਾਦ ਆਰ ਸੇ ਕੋ ਸੇ ਗਰਾਮ ਬੋਲੇ ਬੀ ਸੇ ਬੀ ਉਸ ਥੋੜੀ ਕੋ ਸੇ ਬੀ ਕੋ ਬੋਲ ਜੀ ਬੀ ਸੇ ਬੀ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਰੋਲ ਜੀ ਮਾ ਸੋਰ ਕੋ ਲਾ ਜੀ ਕੋ ਨੀ ਸਾ ਸਾ ਕੋ ਗਰਮ ਨਾ ਦੇ ਕਾ ਦੋਸ ਪ੍ਰੈਸੇ that's why i'm very i'm also very happy that here at Chilana Muslim Muslim Supreme Council there is a sector for tourism i mean welcome tourists whites europeans americans chinese asian this is very very good because this when they come to the Muslim Supreme Council they see how beautiful this mosque appears it's it and the welcoming atmosphere they get no no one is a gofuna abamu kuda chiba chiba la gabo chiba semizo kumbinyo no busira you may not see them actually accepting islam there and then but they come up with this positive mentality positive mindset towards islam those that are, that who think that islam is a religion of terror whatever they don't be like wow islam is a religion of peace islam is a religion of, of, of relation to others people this people must support and relate with others so this is why it's very very good to show them your uh we have a tourist as well to welcome them here it's very very good and it's not haram at all because remember even that's how they the professor of some even this happened they they got most they 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 they, 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 they spread islam through accepting all kinds of people in front of them so meaning not to be like wow this person is a muslim and he's coming to the, the mosque he's what dress like this kind of be positive be welcoming be a good ambassador of islam this person will end up like islam and this person perhaps inshallah will end up impressing Islam and all the things that you will be doing the deeds that you will be performing you are going to be getting the reward the full reward for now I do not listen to Allah Kama Fala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so respect your brothers and sisters and sisters in Islam that is why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in Nasiyah Hati Al-Ummati Al-Jihad Fi Sabih Inna Shua Di The Traveling The Traveling Of My Ummah is in the is in striking in the path of Allah going to Dubai to trade for trade you're going to China for trade you're going to uh, Middle East to work please go with that intention of actually doing something towards the spirit of Allah's religion because what you know what I think of Allah because of Allah's religion Allah says it is a reminder for you and your people and you will be asked to jump to the same ثم لا تسألون يوم إذا عن النعيم all the favors that you get in this world the number one favor is health جيتي شي ولي جيت غيرك سيغا تشاو بلام you shall not say that all these favors that is granted us in this world we shall be asked about them on how we utilize them towards his religion because that is the max of remember i started this lecture by 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 telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with a special purpose with a, with a special purpose and that is to discover and to know him but at the end of the day he says us in the Quran وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِعَمْدُونَ he did not create the jinns and the mankind only to wash them so if that is the reason why then it means that we have this a lot that is expected from us but how can we achieve all this is by giving them to the Quran is the Quran that will open up all this information and guidelines towards us in order to practice and implement it accordingly. We will have Quran in time like I'm very grateful to those that give time to this link, to this reminder, to these lectures. Uh, with, I mean, every you know, weekly, it's very, very good, cool, mashallah. And it's extremely very, very beneficial and rewarding. Because then you're not going to be the same person. The more you engage in these kinds of reminders, in these kinds of lectures regarding the Quran, you can't stay the same person. You yourself, you will realize it, inshallah, in real time. So, as I've done, the mashallah, it is very, very important. Chukuru nyo, wanga yu nadi shu tamulila, tu soguro, tu gena nechi, tu gena nechi, enrejo, tu gena nechi, sasa ni dini ya Allah, na ujani izam, na ujoli sa, ni hili tuwa tu genzi. Kukuwa ni ahi, kezo ni mbuzo ya Allah, Allah wa kekezi zanti, zimu mana tu salu, na yao ma hili ngani naim, na jatu uza kuna 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 k
wa inna huna dhikru laka wa liqawmi kwa sofa tusalon and it is a reminder for you and your people and you will be asked chijukizo jori na abantu watu ya kuchimuzi wako so this Quran remember it is an aman inna aradna amanata ala samawati wal abu when they speak of amana a dew the first the first cre creations that were given this dew or responsibility to serve to, 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 to conduct it it was the heavens Allah first handed the responsibility of this aman to the heavens wal jibal and the mountains wal abu the heavens the universe and the mountains but they they refused to take on the responsibility of this aman. What is the aman? I'm asking what is the aman as we call Now, we if the heavens as, as great as they are, because when we speak of those heavens, subhanAllah, it is also another big topic. But let me just go through it a little quick. Allah says that the khalq of samawat wal abu akbar min khalq al nas. Walakin akbar al nas min alam. That the creation of the heavens and this universe are extremely greater and more, are extremely greater than the creation of us and the creation of mankind. Believe is we have to turn the earth into a new. But most people do not know. But imagine how huge and to them what is also, what is also extremely interesting is that my, as much as that heaven is extremely very great in creation, Allah says, Wa inna na musiaw, wa sama banainaha bi aidin, wa inna na musiaw. It is always expanding. Now, how small, how great is Allah? As great as that heaven is. Allah says it is always expanding. Asiba, we say Abira Buraji. Akikasiya, akikasiya kuwe. Nili kau, Subhanallah. Now let's go to the mountains. Allah says these these mountains. Walat al shifal al marha. Inna kana taqalik al arda. Walat tablu al jibala tu. Allah says we should not walk on this on this wall. We should not move while boasting. To turn around and say that we are not as far. Because to just walk past the sun, say no. I should just walk to walk on the sun. So he's showing us even the greatness of this universe. How great this universe is. More. How 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 great these creatures are. More than us. But still, as good as they are, Allah says, "You are my nigh and my dear. We are far from you. We are going to walk on the sun." They felt extremely, you know, they couldn't handle taking on this responsibility of the Aman of the Quran. But it was taken on by us and mankind. In the Hukan of Allah, Allah says, surely mankind was extremely heedless of what he accepted. So Quran is an aman, it is a responsibility that we accept it to take it from Allah, to serve his to serve his religion, to serve humanity. It is not a matter of being like one, it's a book, you know, just a one much there is a halas, end of story, situation. It is an aman. But inshallah, the more we engage in this lecture as a reminder, we shall be of course learning more and more and of course trying our level best to this Quran guides the one who is sane, the one who is alive, the one who is mindful. Another verse of Allah is telling us what Surely those that left this reminder after it had been brought to them, it is a great reminder, it is a big book, a great book. No falsehood, no falsehood has come before it or in between it or after it. Tanzeel bin Hakim Hamid, 
it is a revelation from the praiseworthy uh, and from the wise. My Allah inna ma qatina li Muslim public. There is nothing that you are being told. Only the uh, only that it was already told was that before you. Inna Rabbaka la maqfira wa huwa qabil ali. Surely your Rabb is the is the possessor of forgiveness and he is the possessor of the faithful punishment. You know that it is وَأَنَّهُ Getting back to our topic of travel, let us always travel wherever you're going. Even if it is within Uganda or any other region, always travel with that purpose of portraying the splendor of the Allah. You may not dress as a Muslim, but you may have at least certain, you know, ways that show that Marshall is possible as a Muslim. For example, it could be, it, it could be your, the people could actually see you, you're trading, you're so good Body books as well, you transact in that you're in a transaction, you're involved in a transaction, and you tell someone, Mashallah, someone is giving you the balance, and that balance is extra, he's giving you extra money. Send us up, is up, and he's so kind of that they know who are no government. Sorry, was it so big? Send us away, so I don't know what this is saying. So, the cigars are what they're so big. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, before we sit up with you, the two, the two are the two years now. In your field, whatever it is, what did I have a house? Name to have enough cigars and impression. I mean, after the impression, it was positive. Towards this now, it had Jan Chiyamu Sigaramu Tima to send you what they walked out of the balance of the election. I didn't want any sense of name. I was coming out of automatic meeting of Sajam Slav. That is what Allah is expecting from us. And people who are like that, Allah, the ones are, are the people that Allah said that will be successful. If you want to be successful, you always have to do something for Allah's religion. If you want to suffer, then then you then then neglect his religion. Then Allah also wants to help you out. Yeah, and again, I'm not in terms of Allah. And so, so why should we have done? Among the Muhammad Kiliza, Muna, Muna, Muna Tasa, in the Amba, Nama Yaku Tasa, that Yaku is a period. Or you will believe if you come forward to help the religion of Allah, to help the cause of Allah, Allah will help you and you will from your feet. Well, the answer of Allah, I answer. And now suddenly help the one who helps him. Allah take that of me and he is free of me. But what does he mean by that? He just means meaning what are you your contribution towards the progress of his religion, your contribution towards the, the spreading of his religion, your contribution towards you know, towards the 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 the, 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 the total you know perception, total positive perception of his religion. Allah SWT has also promised that He is also going to help you. And Allah SWT is extremely, He does not waste the word of those who do good for His, for his cause. Walanu Leon, Pajra Nusini, He never wastes the word of those who are very good. He is going to show you that reward in this world. That is why you see the Sahabas were very successful. And by the time they left this world, the religion of Islam had extremely dominated the entire continent. The entire globe, right? Because their main purpose and maqsad was deen of Allah, the likes of Bilal bin Rabah. Now Bilal was a slave. He was a slave, you know very well in the beginning. He was a slave from Ethiopia, from Habashim and Habashim. And after accepting Islam, mashallah, he was elevated in status. He became the Muhammad of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He also became his right hand man. Not only that, the Prophet sallallahu even passed away. Bilal bin Rabah. MashaAllah, he, he migrated to Syria, Damascus, and he became a governor there, a leader, Baba, a black man leading Arabs. Can you imagine? But this is because he traveled with the purpose of spreading Allah's religion. Not basically for his personal benefits. He became a governor, and that time, Sham was a big country. It was not just basically Syria, it was Sham. Sham was comprised of, uh, you know, Lebanon, uh, Syria, uh, Jordan, uh, uh, 
think Palestine as well. All those countries were under sham. But can you imagine being a governor? And it's because Allah elevated him because he put forward his religion first. And he died as a, as a shaheed. He died as a martyr. He died as a respected man from, from, from as they say, from ranks to riches. And that is already an example of success. Lokman was not a prophet, but look how Allah elevates his status. Now, Lokman, he spoke good words of wisdom towards his child. Yeah, but I yeah, not to shift it. Even the Shirk Allah will not be one of my sons. Do not join partners with Allah. Do not associate with Allah. Surely, sure, associating with Allah is extreme, is extreme trans, transgression. Yeah, but I yeah, even the high, yeah, but I yeah, I think the Salat of the Ma'am of my son perform the prayer and enjoy righteousness. One on a look up and forbid the evil. What's the Alama Asafa? And be patient for whatever attacks you. In the that kind of Azmi Umar, surely that is from those that are the, the forbearing. The Azmi Umar, the whole Azmi we have, the five forbearing prophets, which is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Musa Alayhi Salam, Isa Alayhi Salam, Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, Abu Alayhi Salam. Those are the called the Abul Azmi, Abasu, Umile Bisiwebi, Yom. Of course, when you know what he went through 950 years, we are not accepting his. We don't think that person we can remember very well. We know what Musa salam went through, Ibrahim salam, what he went through as well with that with Munimrud, huh? what Musa salam went through with Fir'aun and his people as well. Because Musa, Musa for all the things that he did for his people, he went through a lot. Less that even he, when, he, when he, he returned back from his trip, that time when he had asked Allah and he went he to he had, he had to meet Allah, and Allah SWT asked him, What has made you leave your people so quickly? You've hastened, you've, you've left them so fast, you've come early than the, than the appointed time to meet Allah. Because the time was supposed to meet Allah, he came early at that time. So Allah asked him, Ya Musa, Ya Musa, what has made you leave your people so fast for Musa? قَالَ مُنْهُ لَا يَعْلَىٰ أَثَرِ وَعَجِيْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي تَرْضَىٰ Of course, in summary, he told Allah that I have hasen towards you for you to be pleased with me. أَمَّا نِعْمِ لِزُوْ كُتُوْكَ بِعُونِ وَسُرُكُ مَا مَعْسِيمَ Of course, then he ended up being given bad news that your people Father of Father, Allah Musa Samiri. Samiri has made them transgress very quickly since that come. But remember, let me also go back to this other point. How Musa alayhi salam, during that migration as well, he got this opportunity to ask Allah. You know when you travel, there is also this nearness that comes with Allah. 